end of chapter 6. And, uh, next chapter will be chapter 7. We'll start that on Friday. Chapter 7 is about AC and DC current. We'll talk about different voltages, different power supply to residential and industrial buildings. Uh, for now, we're still on schematics. I want to go through a few schematics in the PowerPoint. Then we'll do the question at the end of the book. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, hopefully, you understand what the symbols are. You can follow them out of schematics. Uh, we said this is the simple wiring diagram for cat cell control. And we said there are, there are, we are concerned about the connections for each pin that that is in the outside. We're not concerned about what's inside the box. And uh, we should say that this box here represents this component. It has the name on it. And if, we, uh, if I want to trace the power, where do I start from? The power source, line voltage. And as we see here, the line voltage is supplying power to both components. One of them is the apple stud which here is represented by a very small box. So we're not really concerned with that. all the components in it. But we know that the, our component here, the primary control, gets power from the line voltage. And the line voltage is supplied to L1. The limit here is connected to one in the aqua step. So here we have how many components? There's a thermostat, there is a circulation pump, and there's also a primary control. So the primary control controls the burner and the flame. The output stat is <coughs> when the circular turns on and off. Aqua stat is controlling the water temperature and the circulation of water inside the house. So from here, both L1 and L1 should be powered. So the power coming from L1 is giving us power of 110 volts. The aquastat <coughs> will look at the temperature of the water on the side, whether we should turn on the aquastat or not. So this line, which is B1, the burner, goes to the Honeywell control primary control, and this should be also powered. So this primary control will require power from L1 and limit. So what goes into limit? It's a decision making for the aqua stat, for the primary control. If it's powered, it means I'm going to turn on. If it's not powered, it's not going to turn on. So we have two power coming into the primary control. Does that mean that we have two line power, that means that I have 220? No. One of them is just a relay. One of them will power a relay inside. And this also has a transformer in it. So this is going to power a relay, and the relay will connect the circulator, uh, will connect the burner based on this relay. So there's a relay here inside that will activate and connect the burner motor to the L1 power. So all the power coming here is how much? How many volts? 110 supplied by the line voltage. The limit is just decision making power. It's 110. So let's say you don't have aqua stuff and you want to power the primary control. What happens if you leave this one disconnected? Will it turn off? Nothing goes into here. Will this turn on? <coughs> no. No. It's not going to turn on. It will think that the uh, aquastat is not requiring power. So what do you do? Let's say I have a system that has no aquastat and the control requiring a limit. What should I connect to that limit? Cut the switch. You could. Now what is the switch connected to? Power. 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 Thank you. So if L1 is not powered, there is no power. There is, the whole thing will be on, but it's not going to turn on the burner motor. These are the limit, L1, L2, and they are here. 
that one, and nobody can see it. Okay, here if we if you see thermostat is jumper. What does that mean? When we say jumper. For a jumper? Yes. Bypass. <coughs> so it means these two are connected, which means we're always calling for heat. That's why it's jumper over here because I am deciding whether the circle circulator goes on or off based on the aquastat. So the aquastat is connected to the thermostat here. Make sense? Sometimes you'll see two wires coming from each one of those. One of them go to the aquastat and one of them will go into the primary control. It could, it could be a little confusing, but if you follow the events and understand what are the sequence of events, it will make sense. Okay, we have power now. This thing is telling me turn on. This is giving me power. I will turn on the burner motor. So it's going to give me power. How much power? 120. 120. 120. And each one of those will have to have a neutral. The neutral either goes to L2, coming from here, see the connection, and goes back to the L2 into the wall. A cat cell. Cat cell basically sees the light, and it will tell you if there's flame or no flame. Why is that? There are some systems where the flame, once, the, once you have uh, actual flame inside the burner, it will turn off the, the igniter. So you don't have the ignition going all the time. And also, the primary control will have a light and it tell you if there's flame or, don't, or no flame. In some boilers or furnaces, you, you cannot see if the, if, whether there's a flame inside or not. And that's basically how we connect a primary control. Uh, a lot of issues happen with the boilers if, if the primary control goes bad. And what goes uh, bad is inside, you have relay that goes bad, connection that goes bad. But uh, the primary control is not that expensive. Uh, it's around like $70 to $150, depending on the model, but they're not expensive. But you have to know whether it is faulty or not. It does not break very fast. It takes a long time, and uh, it's very reliable. So if it breaks, make sure that uh, you check the other components. So this will be very helpful when we try to diagnose what's going on. And this diagram will help you trace all the wire. And you'll see why is it beneficial to have colored wires because how many, is it? there's going to be a lot of wires in here. <coughs> if you have all the hot and blacks, no different colors, it will be very confusing to trace which one is which. They have some markers you can put on the wires to mark them, but it's okay, can't go over it. Yeah. Do they, do they colors No, just to distinguish, yeah. So usually we have uh, orange, for the burner motor, blue for the igniter, and purple for the valve. Line voltage is black, and ones are always white. So we keep, we keep all the natural whites because it doesn't matter where they connect to, as long as they connect to each other. <coughs> okay? Any question about that? How about the schematic? How, how do you read it? What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, I think a uh, few laps from now, a few laps from now, I'll have you wire one of the cat mm -hmm. and see how it goes. And again, we'll wire it again at least five times next semester. But wiring this will be fun and interesting. It's good to see how you make this when it goes into the uh, when it's, uh, the wires connected. How we will we will use light bulbs for each one of those. Okay, here we have a stack control. Stack control basically 
has uh, a binder rope that goes inside the plane and expand and cut off the wire. So first thing we do when we start the way in here is not to worry about what's inside. So all this component is what's inside. It's the actual diagram. So we do not need to know what's the actual diagram. However, however, it helps to know what power goes into where. But for our connection, we will connect, we will concern ourselves with that terminal, what's coming out of that statutory relay. One, two, three, and we have here W, B, and R. W, B, and R go to what? Thermostat. So they always going to be a thermostat. <coughs> for heating and cooling, the main input is a thermostat. It's what tells the equipment we have the right temperature or we need to increase temperature. Uh, one is always Line voltage. And so then one hot coming to one. And three, if you notice, is also power coming from the line voltage and goes to three components at the same time. Because the oil valve, the ignition, and burner motor. Why is it on the right side here instead of the left? The hot? It doesn't matter. And the L2, what is it? Uh, I had a question. Yeah. Um, you said it doesn't matter what size no. the one L2 are on. Yeah. No question, the homework, it has to do with the pressure switch, though. It doesn't matter. Say what? Is that just for that diagram it doesn't matter, or is it for any diagram? It doesn't matter as long as you label it correctly. OK. So L1, it could be here, it could be here, it could be at the bottom, if the L1 is hot. And sometimes they tell you. <coughs> If they feel that headroom is kind of confusing, L1 is hot. Okay. But usually, we'll assume L1 is hot and L2 is neutral. Yeah. What do you have, like, the pit? Is, like, the, the stuff like this here? It's like, it was, it's <coughs> certainly the way it affected. Say that again? Like, let's say that you did switch the L1 and L2. Yeah. Like, would it affect it because of, like, two totally different spots? Yeah, like, definitely. Different times? Yeah, you can't reverse it. But for here, if we reverse L1 and L2, it's not going to work at all. So you, so you could, but it depends on No, in the diagram, they could switch the places. But if you actually put the uh, neutral and the hot, it's not going to work. Because, good question. Think about it now. If we reverse them, what will happen? You will power the motor right away. Got it? Yeah. The motor will be powered right away. The mission will be powered. The oil power will be powered. Doesn't matter what this thing thinks. So if I put the L1 here, everything will be powered. And I will mess up the whole thing. So the power, this uh, transformer will get some power, but it's not going to work properly at all. And this, if you just have a neutral, and you have the hot and the neutral, it's not going to work. Same thing with the thermostat. The thermostat, you can change the, they have W, B, and R, and sometimes they have yellow if you have a compressor. And yeah. So you don't want to switch the line and power the, the nodes. So let's say one is over there is power supply. Here, fusing into wire thermostat, which is cool here. And three, use green terminal to connect case with ground. What is that? Here. That's for the ground. So if you have a ground, make sure you connect it. So if there's no ground, then just don't put it off. more. So this is a four wire thermostat. R, W, Y, and G. G here is not is not like a, it's not a ground. It goes to the fan motor. Yellow goes to compressor. W goes to the furnace heating unit. And B goes to power the thermostat. So I've seen people wiring stuff with Bill's class yesterday. When aboard, then you use a thermostat like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the powers for the thermostat. And I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time in it because Bill's going to spend two semesters into how to wire a thermostat. Thermostats go bad 
and that thermostats that need to be changed, like the old mechanical ones, I'm probably gonna go with the new models, like here. So make sure you know how to wire those thermostats. And they have programs, you can do a scheduling, and you have different settings. Meaning, a thermostat can be used for heating and cooling at the same time. It could be used for heating, for operating a heat pump. What is a heat pump? It's an AC that can heat. So they have different settings. You have to go into the programming mode, and usually it's in the manual. When you buy it, it's the manual. They'll tell you how to do the programs. There are at least six programs that will tell you uh, that this thermostat can operate different set of equipment. One more. That's a heat pump wiring. And this is as complicated as it gets, and we're not going to work with this. But even if you have to, what do we do? We go a chunk by right chunk. L2 and T2, L1 is here, and T1. What is T1 and T2? <coughs> so for thermostat, uh, we have our compressor, something else in the mix is capacitor in the inside, time motor, and it goes to this big board here with different terminals. But uh, you're not going to need to wire the internal parts of a, of a mini split or a heat pump. Probably they have wires for what you need to connect with basically the thermostat and the power. Okay, I want to spend some time with the questions in the back of the book. So how is uh, how is the paper going? Wait, what's what? What's what? Did you get a ghost? I mean, that's not a video. Yeah. <laughs> 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 